in? I have a few ideas on the Bucos litigation. Well, there's no rush in that. I know. Age doesn't seem to have mellowed Leslie Harrington. And he's still got that special look. What look is that? One reserved for people he's employing. My mother used to get it. The coffee was cold or the beef was too well done. What are you trying to say? I just had the feeling that he looked dissatisfied when he left her, that's all. You're right. He was dissatisfied. Did he suggest that it might be better to get another attorney to handle Rodney's defense? In Boston or New York? No. I suggest it. You look as if you're trying to make up your mind whether to rush for the lifeboats or congratulate me on a victory. Kilty is charged. Mr. Harrington decided it'd be merit in having a local lawyer. He felt that bringing in a well-known criminal lawyer might create resistance as well as the implication of guilt. That sounds smart to me. I don't know if it is. It's a full-time job working at tightrope, isn't it, Stephen? Mr. Dowell, I want to help you defend Rodney Harrington. I imagine you do. But why? Because you think he's innocent or because you admire and respect him and wish only the best for him? Well, there's no love lost between Rodney and me. But I never let sentiments interfere with my career. I believe that. Well, then believe this, Mr. Dell. I want to help you defend Rodney. I want to help you get Rodney acquitted for a purely selfish reason. He's Martin Payton's grandson. I believe that, too. Well, then let's look at what the prosecution has. Statement of the Schuster child. Fowler wouldn't base a murder case on a child's word alone. She's the only eyewitness. Fowler must have something more than that. I think so, too. I think he must have something that proves that Rodney had a motive. That Rodney's act was premeditated. Oh, I don't for a moment believe that proof of that exists. But now we both know that Fowler is no fool. Now, if I could investigate, I could find that he had an apparent motive. Who would you talk to? A lot of people in Peyton Place that are involved in this. Specifically. Norman and Rita to begin with? Do you know something more about this? No, I just have a feeling. Betty Anderson would talk to me. You'd exploit your relationship with Betty? I'm sure she wanted to do everything possible to help Rodney. And Norman and Rita would trust you enough to confide in you? I'm sure they would. The Chernick family? I went to grade school with Stella. How well do you know her? She's a hard girl to know. May I go to work on this, sir? Looks you already have. Thank you, Mr. Dow. Stephen, I hope your suspicions are wrong. Well, I hope so, too, sir. But I doubt it. your eyes looking at the water like that. Following me, Papa? Oh, man can starve waiting for you to come back with the groceries. What are you doing down here? I saw Joey here the first night he came back. So you came looking for him again? Joey's here. That's the only place you'll find him now. You haven't had anything to eat all day. I'm not hungry. You've got to eat. Keep up my strength. Don't worry, Papa. I won't weaken. No, I don't worry. You carry your own strength, like me. We're different from Mom and Joey. That's why you weren't afraid to speak the truth. The truth? Not the Harrington boy. It had to be said, and you weren't afraid to stand up and say it. Who was I standing up for, Papa? Joey? Or you? We're all one. When one falls, we all fall. I learned that when Leslie Harrington... 
I learned that when Leslie Harrington started to push me down. I was a loom worker. There was a future for you, for Joey. Oh, Harrington wouldn't have that. I was too good. He made me a night watchman. I know, Papa. I know. I know. It'll be different now, better. You see, for me and you and Mama. Three for the price of one, huh? Well, Joey would want this. From now on, the Trenax deal only in the truth. No more dreams, promises, and excuses. Only the truth. Stop selling it, Papa. What? The truth. All wrapped up in a rosy future. I've got my supply. You keep yours for yourself. I have all I need. In you. Stella, in California, your job, you never said they you want some kind of vacation? Why? You can't go back till after the trial. I'll write to them. It will be all right. Well, you have such an important job, so much responsibility. I told you, Papa, it will be all right. Then stay for good, here, with us. I can't. You can work for Dr. Rossi? Oh, he was just being kind. When men talk of money, they're not being kind. He meant it. It's too soon to decide. Mama needs you. I know what I'm asking you to give up. I know what kind of life you've got out there. Your job, you worked for it, you earned it. A job with respect, satisfaction. I know that. I am proud of you. I know sometimes I don't sound it, but I know what you've done. Papa. Stella, none of us can go back now. Judge Weber to release Rodney on bail. Underhanded? I know you're just doing your job, but the idea of Rod being locked up. He has been accused of a crime, and the local jail is hardly Devil's Island, Mr. Harrington. But I'm sure you'll agree that being in prison could emotionally scar the boy. I'm sure you wouldn't want that to happen to my son or anyone. Well, Mr. Harrington, what can I say? You can agree to releasing Rodney on bail, and I'll have Ted Dahl initiate action. Well, I can't agree to that. Mr. Fowler. I meant to ask you about your father. How is he? Father's fine, thank you. Good. I'm glad to hear it. He's living in Arizona now. Oh, well, retirement must be rather boring for a man like him. You keep in touch. I talk with him once a week. Does he know about this business with Rodney? I mean, I can understand it if he bears a certain enmity against me. I'm prosecuting this case, Mr. Harrington, on the basis of the facts. Not on the basis of the Elliot Carson case or the effect it ultimately had on my father. And you don't think it's a crime for me to do everything I can to protect my son? Mr. Harrington, it seems to be your destiny to protect someone in a homicide action. First your wife, now Rodney. You are prosecuting me, father. If I didn't have a strong case against your son, I'd never have had him arraigned for murder. <laughs> Continuing story of Peyton Place. As a newspaper man, you can't afford to have feelings. You have to be impartial. Supposing I can't. You got off on the wrong foot. We have to trust each other now. I'm busy, Mr. Court. You were tried on the facts. I think that was a little different, Rodney. Was it? Mm -hmm. 